I've been working on to streamline the data management and analysis process for a project uh, called Encanda, uh, which is investigating adolescent, um, adolescent brain development and the effect of alcohol. Uh, so uh, here we're presented with uh, a challenge for coming up with a, a framework for, oh, sorry. Okay, so, um, so, so the challenge here is to support this, uh, this uh, large scale study and to, uh, to, use, uh, to reuse the neuroinformatics tools that are being developed by this community um, and uh, use them to support this, uh, this uh, traditional lab and scaling up to a multi-site uh, large scale study uh, that supports, um, supports multimodal, uh, longitudinal, and uh, multi-site uh, multi -site study. So this uh, study has five sites across the United States. Uh, it has a total of 808 enrolled participants with three different time points. And all this data is being uh, sent from these sites to the uh, data analysis component at SRI. And so one of the primary challenges for this project was that we needed to start collecting data within six months of being funded. And we had very limited resources for being able to uh, develop and deploy a framework. And so, uh, so one, one place to get started is what are the system requirements that we needed to meet in order to develop this platform? So first, uh, we needed to be able to support a number of different uh, data acquisition tools. Uh, so these were all set in stone by the time that we started building this, this platform. So we had already decided, or it had already been decided by the consortium to use uh, a variety of different web-based uh, web tools, as well as uh, tools that are implemented on just uh, laptops and also paper and pencil tests. And so each of these have, it's a heterogeneous set of, of environments, so, they're, uh, so these are not interoperable systems by any means. And so we also need to be able to maintain a protocol for imaging as well. Uh, so T1, DTI, resting state, and also uh, same day ADNI phantoms and weekly FBURN phantoms. And so, this, so we need to be able to ensure ongoing data quality at each of the sites. We also need to be able to uh, ensure that the data is being collected within a comparable time window between imaging and also the neuropsych and clinical. So we want to also be able to find a system or uh, uh, develop a platform where we can automate as much as possible. And uh, so we're, we're, we're placed with this uh, ecosystem of different neuroinformatics tools. And when we started building this system, it was in 2012. And really, the, the two leaders uh, at that time were XNAT and REDCap, which both support, both support, there we go, um, that both support an API, so an application programming interface, which allows us to actually script and automate uh, ingestion from each of these different, uh, different types of tools. And I'm gonna go into describing how we went about doing that to create a, an integrated platform. Uh, so first, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of what this platform looks like. Uh, and, uh, and how it's set up. So each of the sites have a set of laptops that are used to acquire data and also enter data into web-based tools like the Pen CMP, and also have scanners as well. And so, uh, so for the form-based data, we're using REDCap to, to pull that in, uh, and for imaging, everything is going into XNAT. Uh, and then we have a set of, of Python scripts and a, and a framework for then pulling data out of REDCap and XNet and pulling it into a, uh, a computational environment that is configured for running all of our image analysis uh, and also storing all of the additional metadata in kind of a joint uh, REDCap database. And furthermore, the system is set up to have a data release mechanism where we're uh, incorporating NIDM uh, as a way of releasing data both uh, first within the consortium and then more broadly to the wider community uh, through these kinds of data resources or data repositories. Cool, so first, uh, how, we, how we're working with the clinical and the neuropsych assessments. So again, so we have these heterogeneous set of instruments that we need to be able to start pulling in within six months of the start of the, the, uh, of the study. Uh, so we don't necessarily have like a, a full, the, all the databases fully configured, but we're able to uh, have an SVN repository, so a version control system uh, that is checked out to each of the laptops at the five different sites. And uh, each night there's a script that runs that then checks in any new data into this SVN repository, similarly for uh, the web-based tools. And so this allowed us to start collecting data from all of the sites asynchronously uh, in the sense that we were able to pull the data in and at least uh, stage it for then uh, being uh, uploaded into the database once it was ready. 
And so at this point, we were able to transform the data into a common data model and push that up into REDCap, which is initially just a cross-sectional REDCap project, which allows you to place all the form-based data in its uh, appropriate location. Uh, and then there's an additional step where we extract that data also automatically and uh, pull it into a longitudinal REDCap project uh, that allows us to have an integrated view across all the different sites for, and also let us know some information about uh, what, the uh, what the status is of the completion for different instruments. So green obviously is complete, red is not complete, and yellow is, is, uh, is still incomplete, but some data is there. So for our multimodal imaging, all the data from the sites is loaded into an XNet server. Uh, we then have some semi-automatic QA that's done. There's also manual review of all of the images, as well as neuro neuroradiologists uh, review of the uh, images. And so we've also found some uh, clinically relevant cases that we're then able to reach out to patients, physicians, and whatnot, and have that uh, further uh, taken care of. Uh, and then we also extract a variety of metadata from XNet and populate REDCap with, uh, with some, some information that allows us to validate what the scanning protocols are that were completed, uh, and also do uh, nightly and hourly QA reports uh, to keep everything uh, kind of running smoothly. And so once it scans are indicated as being usable, this triggers uh, our pipeline to pick up on the nifty files and import that into a... Uh, framework we call lightweight data pipelines. This is on Nitric if you want to take a look. It's actually just a very simple shell script uh, that allows you to uh, basically define what the inputs are and outputs are to, to, a, um, to a given script or analysis script. And then it allows you to, uh, when new data comes into the system, it'll just automatically pick that up and, and analyze it. Um, it's fairly agnostic to what the script that it actually runs. So for example, uh, our uh, Resting state preprocessing is all in NiPipe, so it's still compatible with other uh, workflow systems. Uh, we also use uh, you know, FSLs, TBSS for our diffusion processing, and, uh, and FreeSurfer for um, extracting uh, measures such as anatomical volumes. So with all this, uh, the data analysis that we've been doing, uh, we've currently completed these, this section in red and green. So we have this platform that streamlines all these different processes for research. But currently, we're working on uh, this piece where we now have um, a integrated set of uh, curated REDCap data dictionaries that we now want to use, uh, use in Canda as a use case for uh, NIDM and bids that you heard about in the previous two discussion or presentations. And uh, and then we'll be able to apply the NIDM uh, apply the NIDM framework that David or that uh, Dr. Keeter had presented, and uh, incorporate this idea of, of developing object models that we then can uh, distribute our data uh, using this uh, this NIDM based approach. And so the general idea behind this is that we can use these REDCap data dictionaries uh, to then make a mapping to the NIDM ontology, uh, and then be able to generate specifications. Uh, that describe exactly uh, what, we, what we're distributing to the community. Um, and then uh, we can also take the CSV files that we're already uh, releasing uh, as part of our, our data release process, but then creating these NIDM mappings that enable us with some semantic technologies, improve the amount of queries or the types of queries that we can make, uh, incorporate um, annotations from external ontologies like the Cognitive Atlas. And this will provide basically like a, a machine processable uh, format that's self-describing that also links out to this documentation. And so in the process of, of working through all this, uh, we want to be able to use, uh, use an IDM as a way of distributing uh, in Canda data sets. And so uh, what we've learned from this process, so um, we found that the, the ecosystem of neuroinformatics software that's available uh, is now mature enough to be able to build uh, your own scalable uh, neuroinformatics platforms. Uh, we also found that uh, it's really important for informaticians to be a part of the design of a study where I think we could have uh, minimized some of the complexity of all the different instruments uh, if we were to choose uh, more common platforms rather than having different data acquisition devices all over. Uh, we also found that version control systems are a great way to start collecting data before you necessarily have all of your infrastructure set up. Um, and then, so uh, inclusion, we found that uh, by developing uh, this system and using, reusing tools from the community, uh, being able to run a like, longitudinal multi-site study is no longer something that's reserved really for large labs. I mean, this is something that you can build upon the tools and, and infrastructure that's already available to the community uh, to be able to participate in, uh, for more investigators to be able to participate in uh, large-scale multi-site studies. And so all the, the software and 
framework that I've discussed here is, is uh, was recently released on Nitric, so go check it out and let us know if you have any questions. And with that, I'd just like to thank NIAAA for funding uh, and also the data analysis core, particularly Torsten Rolfing, who is the initial implementer of the framework, and also INCF, uh, so I'm a member of the data sharing task force as well. And um, all of these folks, I look forward to working with you as we try to incorporate NIDM bids and other standards into the Incanda framework. With that, thank you. Thank you.